What's going on, everybody? It's out of Jacoby Owens, and um, I just want to share a quick nugget and um, a couple thoughts. All right. So, uh, I, you know, I listen to YouTube and I check different things out. Um, I have different people that I have been subscribed to, and uh, there's a lot of there's a uh, a topic going around about the Mandela effect, right? Uh, basically where it's some type of parallel universe uh, that's leaking into our universe because of different things that have changed and of course some of the primary examples are uh, Mandela Nelson Mandela some people believe they remember him dying at a certain period of time and then he died recently in what 2013 or something more recent along those lines or Chick-fil-a being spelled different McDonald's being spelled different all these different things right remembering movies wrong or what have you right and I'm fine with that. You know, that at the end of the day, that really doesn't matter, right? So I won't say that it's impossible with with those things. Now, some of that stuff, right, could have been uh, company issues like McDonald's. I like a lot of old people that I know do call McDonald's McDonald's. Maybe it was McDonald's years ago. I don't know, right? And I don't really care enough to do the research to find out. But I know companies can and have changed their name for uh, various reasons that are related to business and they'll keep it similar to what it used to be just so they won't lose the clientele because uh, you, you know you miss an A it's not a big deal but what I do have a problem with and what any other believer in Jesus Christ in the word of God should have a problem with is when not the world because the world's always attacking the word of God every a lot of attacks that come are attacks toward Jesus and his word and his inerrancy, right? But when believers get on this Mandela effect wagon, and then they start to say, well, the Bible has been changed, right? Uh, the lion, it said, that didn't it used to say the lion will lay down with the lamb? Now it says the wolf will lay down with the lamb. Or they're talking about the Lord's prayer. Or didn't it used to say this instead of that? Or, or just various other scriptures, right? Some people say, oh, sir, and send somebody back in time to change the words or, or something along those lines, right? At the end of the day, first of all, at the end of the day, if they did some, send somebody back to change the words, right? Why didn't they take out the most important word in the Bible? One of the most important words in the Bible, which is Jesus. The name above all names, the name that has power attached to it, that when I'm under oppression, I'm under attack, that I can call on this particular name, and here comes my help, here comes my freedom, here comes my deliverance. They didn't change that, right? I honestly don't believe the Bible's been changed, and here's why. It's because I trust the Word of God. I trust the Word of God before I trust anybody on YouTube. I trust the Word of God, and I have to trust the Word of God before I trust my own memory. If I remember the scripture to say one thing, and I look in the word of God and it says something else, guess who's right? In Romans, doesn't it say, let God be true and every man a liar, right? Who's right if I remember the scripture wrong? And say, I remember the scripture wrong, my brother, my sister, my mother, we all remember the scripture wrong, we studied it wrong, and we remember the words wrong, all right? Who's right? Oh, well, all fathers remember it to be this way, so it has to have been changed. I said, man, look, I'm, I made a mistake. I, I remember the scripture wrong. Me and my, me and my uh, four-year-old, my two-year-old, we say scriptures at night. I was getting them to remember uh, John 3.16. Uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When it gets to the part where it says should not perish but have everlasting life, you know how hard it was to remember or to get should and shall, not to mix those up. You know, to, to make, to say, thou shall not perish, but have everlasting life, or thou should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know what I mean? We get mixed up. We're human. We're fallible. We make mistakes. But when we go to now put those mistakes in the word of God, it's been changed. How can we trust the word of God? See, this is an attack of the devil. We have to realize that. The enemy always wants to destroy and attack God's word. That's what he did in the garden. Why are we surprised if that's what he's doing now? Even if it's coming through our brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Making video after video about how the Mandela effect has changed the Bible. You know, um, I believe that the King James is the the uh, 
the most accurate English translation of the Bible, and I know some of you don't agree, and that's fine, right? But this is the only one that's coming under question, right? Of uh, this being, as far as being changed. So that means that not only would the King James it would have had to been changed, but the Mass Oretic, which it was taken from, would have had to been changed as well. But I just want to take you to a couple scriptures because we do have lots of translations that do have variations on what the Word of God says. You know, that's a whole other topic. But as far as there being an accurate source for us to look at today as English readers, God's word is true. And this is why I say so. I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures. And I'll be done with this. Luke 21, 33. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Psalms 138, verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Psalms 12, 6 through 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver trod in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And we can stop right there. God is able to keep and preserve his word. No matter what people think, no matter what you remember, what I remember, what some scientist says, what some big name minister says, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the word of God and our trust and our relationship with him. You know what I mean? I can I can have visions. I can dream dreams. Uh, I, Lord can use me to prophesy, but I can still mess up and make a mistake. I can still remember something wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapped in this flesh that's always warring against my spirit. You know, we have to realize that. And if we're putting this out there, that it's the Mandela effect has power over God, that God's not the, the God over even parallel universes, if that's where we want to go, that God's not the God of past, present, and future. If we don't believe that he has power over all of these realms, over heaven, earth, and what's under the earth, what's in hell, or whatever, what other galaxy or dimension that there may or may not be, if he's not God over that, how is he all powerful? How can we trust him? If he can't, he said he'll preserve his word. And here it is, this Mandela effect uh, is changing his word. How can we trust him for our salvation? How can we trust him for our deliverance? See, this is what this, this cultivates. This is what this idea brings forth. It's almost a strong delusion. Not that strong. But it's almost a strong delusion. See how easy it is for the children, for the people of God to be to be uh, thrown off course. It says Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed. And I'm, I'm going to double check if that's the exact place it is. 4, 6 or somewhere around there. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Our knowledge has to be synced with the word of God before we look externally at all this profane wisdom. We have to look internally at the word of God. You know, if he's if he's living inside of us, if he's uh, speaking to us and dealing with us, we have to look at the word of God because that is our lifeline. That is our light in this world of darkness. And I'll be done with that. Prayerfully, uh, those few scriptures helped you get back on track with uh, where we should be in, in Christ, you know, in, in trusting him. Like, well, I, you know what? I'm tripping. I messed up. I made some mistakes. You know why? I didn't even remember these scriptures. But that's absolutely right. God is able to preserve his word. You know what I mean? It's just prayerfully the, these scriptures have been a blessing to you. And they definitely have been a blessing to me. All right? Until next time. Remember, Monday is a Monday. Oh, well, not. Remember, if you have a prayer request or a testimony, feel free to leave a comment below or shoot me an email at jacodio at gmail.com. And we'll pray together. And I'll share your testimony. All right? Until next time, be blessed.